In this week's episode, I make a form tool and talk a little bit about hardening steel in the home shop. I have a project coming up that I'd like to use an OD radius cutter on. Normally I'd just file the radius in the lathe and cut out a little paper gauge, but I'm making a number of these and I'd like to make sure the radii are matching. I'll also be machining aluminium, so making a radius cutter isn't a big deal. O1 or W1 is the material I chose as a compromise on machining, hardenability in the home shop, and durability. Specifically in this case I'm using O1. But why O1 or W1? Why not D2 or 4140 or some other tool steel? Why not machine an annealed high-speed steel blank and harden it? Let's talk a little bit about simple hardening procedures in the home shop. Most of us are aware that many types of steel can be hardened in some fashion. And most of us understand the basics of the hardening process. Heat up the steel in some way and cool it from the heated state very quickly. I like using sunflower oil, but that depends on which steel I'm hardening. I like sunflower oil for quenching because I temper my parts in the home oven. That way it smells like I'm cooking something, not burning something. It keeps you from getting into more trouble. Now hardening steel is an entire field in and of itself. It's a process that requires attention to details, and it is those little details that make it very difficult to really master. But if we understand a few of the basics and make a few careful choices, we make the process a little bit easier in the home shop. The most common method for heating is the plumber's torch. One of these or maybe one of these. I find these ones are quite small and they don't do a very good job. You should look at one of these or a turbo torch or something like that. These torches are usually propane fueled and use atmospheric oxygen. They're the most common because they're the most accessible and least expensive. If you have an oxyacetylene torch or an oxypropane torch, heating things up to proper temperature are much quicker and easier. Some folks also have temperature controlled electric kilns that make the heating process very controllable. Now, if you're really into hardening steel, consider looking into an oven. They aren't as difficult as they may appear. Now, if you're using a plumber's torch, and that's what I mainly use for hardening small parts because it's quick and inexpensive, the limiting factor is the amount of heat you can generate. These torches will only put out a certain amount of BTUs. It's not so much the temperature of the flame. A propane flame is hot enough to reach the transition temperature for most hardening steels. It's just that we usually lose so much heat to the surroundings. To avoid losing heat, you could build a small forge using fire bricks like these ones here. So back to the original question, why W1 or O1 tool steel? The most important factor is carbon content. W1 and O1 have about 0.95% carbon. And to understand why that's important, let's draw a basic phase diagram for steel. So here's a basic diagram for steel. Let's go through exactly what is on this chart. On the y-axis here, we've plotted temperature in Celsius. Along the x-axis, we've plotted carbon content. Then there are a bunch of lines. These segregate the graph into different areas of phase, or solutions of steel, if you will. Note we aren't anywhere near the molten stage yet. Max is out here around 900 degrees. Steel melts somewhere around 1400 or 1500 degrees Celsius. Up here near the top, in this triangle area, if you will, we have a region called austenite. In heat treating, that is the most important area. We need to heat the steel up to its austenite phase. One interesting thing to note about this austenite phase is that it's non-magnetic. You may have heard that before. In this area here, we have a mixture of austenite and ferrite. Over in this area here, we have a mixture of austenite and cementite. And below this line at 727 degrees Celsius, we have a mixture of ferrite and cementite. You'll also hear words like perlite 
used as well. That occurs below this line as well. Now the names of all this stuff doesn't matter all that much, but the graph tells us something very important. In heat treating steel, our goal is something called martensite, a very hard structure that is formed when austenite is quickly cooled. It is this martensite that transforms our machinable material into something that can cut non-hardened steel. It's important to note in the hardening process that we must transform steel into its austenite phase. If we look at this graph, we see a point at 0.77% carbon where this transition temper is at its lowest point to fully austenite. You can see that here. If we move to a lower carbon content or a higher one, the transition temperature moves up as depicted by these lines. For those interested, this 0.77% carbon steel, they call that the eutectoid steel or eutectoid point. So steels like D2 tool steel have about 1.5% carbon. That's over here. 4140 steels have about 0.4% carbon. That's over here. Now if we draw those lines up, you'll see that it, in this case, we actually move off camera somewhere around a thousand degrees, maybe just below a thousand degrees. And 4140, which would be somewhere around here, it's over here, which is above 800 degrees. Now the alloying elements play with this graph a fair bit. This is really a simplification. But as you can see, the further you move away from the 0.77% carbon content, the higher the temperature you need to get into this austenite phase, fully austenite phase. Also, when you move more to the left, it should be noted that steel really doesn't have enough carbon to get fully hard. In these steels, often carbon is added in the hardening process through various means. So O1 and W1 have about 0.95% carbon, somewhere between 0.9 and 0.95% carbon. They are some of the lower carbon tool steels, and as such, they have a lower temperature transition point into austenite, somewhere around 1. So if we draw a line up here, we're right about here, maybe a little bit here. So somewhere between 700 and 800 degrees Celsius. This is why they are easier to harden using home shop tools. It's just easier to get them into the fully austenite range for proper hardening. Now let's look at how I made the form tool. After drawing up what I was looking for in Fusion, I started with a piece of round O1 tool steel, turned it down to size, then drilled a hole in the center to form the radius I wanted to cut. This hole was drilled on an angle to provide relief for the cutting tool. I then reamed the hole using an inexpensive tapered ream that left a bit to be desired. After that it was milled to final shape, hardened, honed, and tested. <laughs> 